Well, welcome once again, everybody, to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heikam, and I'm really excited to be with you today as we take a look at Chapter 8 of Max Lucado's book, uh, Traveling Light. In Chapter 8, uh, Lucado uh, takes us to um, the idea of the burden of guilt. He calls this chapter a heavenly exchange, um, and he utilizes uh, sort of like a cookie exchange illustration um, to sort of talk about the exchange that God intends to make for our guilt. Um, and so uh, if you've read the chapter, you know that Lakato talks about how there was this time where he was invited to participate in a, a cookie exchange at his work. Um, and he was really, um, I guess, anxious and nervous and frustrated by that because he doesn't know how to cook. He doesn't know how to bake. He doesn't make cookies. And so um, the idea of this cookie exchange was you bring cookies with you and as many cookies as you bring, you get to take that many home from various other folks um, cookies that they brought. Um, if you didn't bring cookies, you can't come. So that sort of left Max Licato out because how is he gonna get the cookies? He doesn't know how to make them. It's a good illustration. <clears throat> I'm not sure it fits 100% with the idea of our guilt, though. Uh, and here's the reason why. <clears throat> Max Licato could very well have done something uh, to remedy that situation. In other words, um, if he really, really wanted to participate in this cookie exchange, he could very well have um, either gone online or gone to um, some maybe local bakery or something, and someone could have very well taught him how to, um, how to bake cookies. Um, additionally, he's, he's married. And so perhaps he could have gone to his wife and said, Hey, listen, there's this potential, uh, party coming up and I have to bring cookies and I don't know how to make cookies. Can you show me how to make these cookies? So I feel like there's something he could have done to fix the situation, but with our guilt, I'm not sure that it's always, or even ever within our control to rid ourselves of that guilt. Uh, yes, it does have to start with us, I think. We have to be willing to be able to work through whatever it is that we feel this guilt about and um, perhaps forgive ourselves, forgive others, uh, maybe go and ask other people for their forgiveness. Um, there are some things we can do to sort of rectify the reason why the guilt exists, but I don't know that there's a lot that you or I can do to really take away the feeling the weight, the burden that guilt lays on us. And I think Licato gets to that point. He talks about how God is 100% right, and we can never be righteous, right, as God is. Um, on page 65, for example, he says, Our God and Savior Jesus Christ does what is right. God is a righteous judge. The Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Um, he says, Isaiah described God as a righteous God and Savior. On the eve of his death, Jesus began his prayer with the words, Righteous Father. Do you get the point? God is righteous. His decrees are righteous. His judgment is righteous. His requirements are righteous. His acts are righteous. Daniel declared, Our God is right in everything he does. So God is never wrong. He has never rendered a wrong decision, experienced the wrong attitude, taken the wrong path, said the wrong thing, acted the wrong way. He is never too late or too early or too loud or too soft or too fast or too slow. He has always been and always will be right. He is righteous. Now, when it comes to righteousness, God runs the table without so much as a blank shot. When it comes to righteousness, we don't know which end of the cue stick to hold. Hence our plight. Those are <clears throat> billiards terms um, to be able to run the table without so much as a bank shot, meaning um, that you can uh, get all of the other um, eight balls into their pockets um, without even having to bank them off of one side or the other. Um, the idea here being that that would have to be a pretty perfect billiards player. So now we have two problems, don't we, when we think about the reason why we have guilt. One is we're not right before God. Two is that means we're not perfect 
before God. Now, you might say, well, Pastor, I never intended necessarily to be perfect. I never tried to suggest that I am perfect before God. I know you didn't. But the reality is, isn't that what he calls us to? Isn't that what God calls us to? He calls us to being perfect before him, holy before him. He calls us to a holiness. This fits so beautifully for us here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church because just yesterday we um, talked in our, our, our message about um, Jesus coming again as the branch of the Lord, which will sort of make this connection uh, between the, the root and the, and the tree and the leaf, which is us, the root being God, the, the, the trunk of the tree being the Holy Spirit, the leaf being us. And then Christ is this branch that connects us all back together. We would like to think that we can fix our own problems. We can remove our own sin. We can make ourselves better in some way. We would, we would think that that would make sense for God. He would want us to do that. But that isn't the case, right? He wants us to come to him to receive forgiveness of sin, to become better because of what he's doing for us, because of his work for us. That's the only way to become better. That's the only way to get rid of sin. That's also the only way to get rid of guilt, so if we carry guilt with us, on, on some level, it's very much like carrying sin with us every day. Something had to happen in order for that guilt to be there. I mean, what is the word guilt? What does it actually mean? It means that you are guilty, that you have, you have done something that you shouldn't have been part of something, thought something, acted in a certain way, said something, something happened that shouldn't have happened. And now you have regret. You are guilty. You have a responsibility to that thing. You have a, uh, a need, an obligation perhaps, if at all possible, to make it right. As I was reading, <coughs> and I was thinking a lot about this idea of being uh, of carrying the burden of guilt with us. I was reminded of last year um, in Stevenson County, Illinois, where I grew up, there was a tragic accident that happened. Um, a semi-truck driver was driving down the road and um, actually struck the, the vehicle and struck a Illinois State Police officer. And, of course such a ter terrific accident, took the life of the police officer. Now, this man who was driving this semi-truck, obviously I don't know all the details. I don't want to know all the details. Um, I think some of the reports mentioned that perhaps he had fallen asleep at the wheel or something of that nature. I, I don't really know. Whatever the situation is, I, I just read an article a couple of weeks ago, almost a year later now, that this man um, actually um, uh, pled guilty to the charge of reckless homicide. I can't imagine the amount of guilt, the burden, the weight of guilt this man must carry every single day of his life. Because at the end of the day, accident or not, at the end of the day, intentional or not, at the end of the day, it happened. And he allowed it. He permitted it. He did something, and, and the result was this accident. I mean, it's a terrible place to be, but the guilt is still there. And, and, and if I was that man, I guess the question would be, how does that ever go away? Does it ever go away? Can it ever? And, and the answer is, it can. It absolutely can go away. Even guilt like that can go away but it can't go away by anything you or I can do it can only go away by what God has already done for us in Bacato's book he talks at the bottom of page 65 about how God it wouldn't make any sense for God to spend all of eternity with people who are who are not righteous who are not perfect before him. 
But yet we carry this guilt, this burden of guilt. We carry the burden of sin and all these other things. And so we can't be righteous before him. And so does it mean that we can't spend eternity with him? Of course not. So how does this all work out? Well, Max Licato talks about how he was able to go to this cookie exchange. <clears throat> he was able to participate in the cookie exchange, not because he figured out how to make cookies, not because you know somebody uh, showed him how to make the cookies and he actually made them, but because someone was generous enough to drop off a plate of cookies in his office. Now, whether it was intentional or coincidental doesn't matter. He had what he needed in order to go to this party. And so he went, and I love this uh, last part of his story here. He says, um, he talks about how uh, his, um, when he was at the party, did he go around uh, and say, look at the cookies that I baked? Did he act as if he had actually baked those cookies himself? He, he didn't. He actually went around saying, I'm only here because someone saw fit to be generous toward me and drop these cookies off in my office. If we go to my illustration of this man involved in this terrific accident, I, again, don't know this, right? I, I, I don't know details, um, and, and I've never met this man or anything of that nature, but I wonder if maybe some point will come in his life where he might be able to recognize somebody has done something incredibly generous for him also, that person being God, in the person of Christ Jesus, suffering and dying to take away guilt, even such an incredible guilt as that. And then I guess that would bring me to you. Do you also recognize that? That someone has done something incredibly generous more generous than dropping off a plate of cookies or, or any other kind of illustration you can come up with. Jesus went to the cross. He suffered and he died so that you don't have to carry around guilt. That doesn't mean you don't have to confess guilt. That doesn't mean you don't have to go and seek forgiveness for the things that you've done that you shouldn't do. That doesn't mean you don't need to make a right with those people. It doesn't mean you're off the hook somehow. It just means that you don't have to carry it. He wants to bear that burden for you. And I think what's even more important than as we kind of get back to where Lucado is pushing us here to Psalm 23 again, where this time we read, he leads me in paths of righteousness. We started out by talking about how God is right. We are not. God is perfect. We are not. God is going to spend eternity with those who are right before him. We are not right. How can we become right? Because he wants to lead us in the path of righteousness. If we can start to let go of this stuff, all of these things that we're filling up, right? Our, our, our suitcase, the, the picture that we've been having each week, all of this stuff that we're filling up our suitcase, if we can start to let it down, if we can start to leave it with him, we can become free. We can find a, a, a release. We can find an opportunity to walk with him again. And when we start walking with him, guess where he leads us? Down the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. So that when we are united with him, because we've walked on the path of righteousness with him, we become righteousness by what he has done for us. When we are united with him, we will have nothing else to say except for I am here because somebody did something incredibly generous for me. That somebody is God who died for me. That's why I'm here. I think guilt is probably the heaviest thing we put in that suitcase. Yes, anxiety, yes, all the other things, but guilt, hmm. to walk around with guilt the rest of my life, I, 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 I can't fathom the pain and the weight of that. And so, if you are struggling today with guilt about something, I know this is <clears throat> so much easier said than done, but I encourage you, 
consider that guilt. What caused it? What brought it about? What perhaps were you negligent in? Whom have you hurt? Go to them. Confess to them. Ask for forgiveness. And, and you know, not always are they going to be willing, but at least you've made the confession. You've asked for the forgiveness. And then begin to forgive yourself for that thing and let that weight be taken off. Let God take over that weight. Let him carry it for you so that you can be free to walk down the path of righteousness with your God. I hope you all have a great week this week. I hope you have some time to think about guilt and the weight and the burden of it. <clears throat> and until uh, we get together again next week when we take a look at um, chapter 9, where Lucado is going to tell us to get over ourselves. That's a difficult one. I hope you'll have a great week, and I hope um, you'll just be safe and well. We'll talk to you very, very soon.